This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at another example about how we recognise performance obligations within the statement of profit or loss that are satisfied over a period of time. So here within this example, similar to what we had in the previous example, we're looking at how this contract is recorded in the statement of profit or loss. So we're not worried too much about the statement of financial position. We're just looking at the performance statement. And again, we're looking at, is it the year end December 20x5? So uh, what do we have? It says Evelyn commenced the building contract in 20x5 that's seen a large increase in future cost to complete. Uh, will still be completed on schedule in 20x6. So it started in 20x5. It's going till 20x6. It's spanning an accounting period and, and therefore the performance obligations are likely to be satisfied over that period of time. Uh, the information that we've got is as follows. We're told the total contract value. So again, that effectively is the total revenue. Uh, we've then got our costs to date, our costs of completion, and then the percentage completion. So we've been given that there within the question. Uh, so what I'd like you to go through and do, just so that you're not listening to me incessantly, uh, I'd like you to first of all go through and do what we did on the previous example. So I'd like you to go through that and work out the total profit or loss on this contract. Have a go, see how you get on. So stop the video and then you can start it again once you've worked it through, okay? Stop it now. Did you stop the video? Did you have a go at the question? I hope you did, because uh, it'd be interesting to see what, what you found with regards to the overall profit or loss on this contract. Did you get a profit on the contract? Yes. If you did, you might have just gone wrong because hopefully you should have been getting a loss on the contract. Because what we've got is we look at the total revenue to which we then go through the and deduct the total costs. And the cost that we have, remember, are the cost to date. and the costs to complete. Uh, so here what we had, the total contract revenue in millions, let's just check, was that 40? Excellent, so those that you've done it, yeah, this is easy, those that you haven't, like, why didn't I do it? I should have done it. Uh, total cost to date, 25. Cost to complete are 20, which means therefore that the costs exceed is it the, the revenue? So therefore we have a loss. And if we have a loss making contract, then what takes effect is the accounting concept of prudence. So if we see that we are a loss making contract, then that loss we need to recognize it 100%. We need to recognize it in full. Okay. So how do we go about recognizing that loss in full? Well, we've still got to think about the stage of completion. Which we know is at. 45% per the question, but, and it's a big but, it is loss making. So therefore, we recognize 100% of the loss. 
immediately so in this year and then we will work out the figure for the revenue based upon is it the your stage of completion the amount that the work has been certified so in this instance was it 45 percent so if that's the case if we're going to go through then and have a look what happens in the statement of profit or loss i've made this example just a little bit easier for yourselves given that it's the first year of the contract so what we're looking at the are the revenues the costs and the loss remember the loss is the at 100 percent so that loss that we've made is five uh, the revenue how do we recognize the revenues well we're told that it is 45 percent complete so therefore we're going to recognize 45 percent of the total contract revenue of 40 which gives me 18 and what we then do is we work out the costs for the year as a balancing figure so that works out there is that 23 okay uh, so that's the figures that would then appear in your statement of profit or loss the revenue of 18 will get added to what other ever revenue figures that there may be uh, and the costs get included within cost of sales alongside all the other cost of sales that there may be within the question. The key bit is that as soon as you identify a loss, you go in there and recognize 100% of that loss. So make sure that you follow this standardized procedure that we're slowly developing. So first of all, work out the total profit or loss on the contract and determine whether it's a profitable or a loss making contract depending upon whether it's profitable or whether it's loss making will then depend upon the accounting treatment uh, if it's a loss making contract you recognize that loss immediately 100 percent in full uh, uh, if it is profitable you then recognize it based upon that that stage of completion based upon uh, either your input or your output method again as we're seeing in these questions uh, We've been given the percentage makes life that a little bit easier and then what you've got and the statement of profit or loss you then recognize the figures uh, again just be careful if we go back to the the previous example uh, that we looked at in the previous video just make sure that you you can understand that whenever you're given the total profit or work out the total profit or the total loss remember that is cumulative so it could be for more than one year so in the example in the previous video we looked at things for, for two years didn't we? we were at the end of x5 as the current year but in this instance it was just the first year so we didn't have to adjust the cumulative figures for, for anything else okay excellent there you go so that's covered the essentials that you need uh, whereby performance obligations are satisfied over time We'll go through in the following videos and then start to look at how it works with regards to your statement of financial position.